Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I said uh, two Tuesdays ago, I rise to oppose this motion. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the amendment motion is amendment motion. Uh, kindly uh, allow me to prosecute my case. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if you look at this country, it is true that we have inherited a colonial state that actually is extractive in nature. And the first extraction was to the crown in London. And when you look now to where we are today, you will see that the same arguments that were in 1963-65 are prevailing between a central government and devolution and between the people and a uh, landmass. Mr. Speaker, if you refer to the 1965 session of paper number 10 on African uh, uh, socialism and its application in the planning of Kenya, you will clearly see a contestation between a country that wanted to concentrate its resources so as to galvanize the country and the failure of Majimbo and the advice that was given to Kadu through its lawyer who was actually hired from Switzerland where they have cantons, cantons that are divided, seven of them, and which produce a, rotation, a rotating president every year for seven years. And coming back to this same uh, idea of a session of paper, it is very interesting to note that there was also another session of paper in 2012 that was actually put in place ostensibly, ostensibly, Mr. Speaker, to slow down the horse for the donkey to catch up. And this session of paper, championed by uh, Waziri Muhammad Elmi, is not actually being uh, flagged out as a key determinant of the current uh, second generation formula that actually has caused an illegality and injustice to many Kenyans who deserve to be properly resourced in terms of the, of the monies that are going to counties. And why am I saying so? If you look at the Sakaja Amendment, it seeks to freeze the population of this country to the 2009 census. And Mr. Speaker, I beg to disagree. Because we have new data in 2019. And I want to give an example. In the county of Mandera, there were, the, the 2019 census has demonstrated that the population reduced by 15%, Mr. Speaker. And when you look at that, in the 2009 census, the same population had more males than females within the same variance. And yet the norm is there are slightly more females than males. If you combine the population of Wajia, Mandera, and Garissa, you get a total population of 2,490,000 people. And if you compare the same to the population of Kiambu, we have 2,417,735 persons. Now, the cumulative allocation of those three counties is a record 25 billion, Mr. Speaker. And yet, the, the, the allocation for Kiambu County is 9.4 billion with actually a, a wage bill of 8 billion, Mr. Speaker. What's your point of order? Is that Senator? really fair? What's your point of order, Senator? A county with the same number of order, people order, 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 16 billion. Order. There is a point of intervention from Senator Mazayo. Asante wana speaker. Hoja yangu ya nidhamu. Hivi sasa tunongea mambo ya ugavi wa pesa zinazo kuenda katika county. Ndugu yangu Maura 
ambaye anamheshimu sana anasema sasa watu wa Mandera waume ni wengi wanawake kidogo anasema watu wa Mandera maeneo yao ni pakubwa hawana watu yeye aongee bila anavyotaka kupinga ile hoja ya ugavi wa pesa ambao umeletwa na ndugu yetu Sakaja kuliko kutupeleka katika njia njia nyingi mbili tatu nne tano za kusema wengine wanazaa zaidi wengine wazai zaidi hasa akisema kwamba watu wa Kiambu wanazaa wanawake wengi wanaume ni kidogo ina maanisha nini katika ile hoja yake anatuletea hapa nafikiria bwana speaker ingekuwa vyema uweze kumwambia atulie katika kile kitengo ambacho anataka kusema badala ya kusema kwamba wakina mama wa kutoka Mandera ama sehemu zozote atakazotaka kustaja ni makosa sana kuambia kwamba mama zetu hawazai waume wanazaa wanawake ama wanazaa waume wengi na wanawake hawazaliwi wakati na tamaa uchunga usiende kwa details zingine ambazo zinaweza kuleta taharuki mheshimiwa speaker na niwie radhi lakini lazima niseme ukweli uliopo e, kwa sababu kila kila mama ana uwezo wa kupata mtoto na watu wa Kiambu ni wengi. Kwa hivyo lazima ni, niongee kuhusu takwimu. Takwimu ambazo ni rasmi, sio mambo ya kufikiria na sifa na sidhani mheshimiwa speaker hiyo ilikuwa hoja nidhamu, hiyo ilikuwa ilikuwa kuchanga. Na nena kuomba mheshimiwa speaker tafadhali uweze kunikinga kutokana na hoja zisizo za za nidhamu za, za, za rafiki yangu e, mheshimiwa e, 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 Mwazayo. Na mheshimiwa speaker niseme pia kuna watu ambao wanafikiri kwamba wao lazima wazungumze wengine wasizungumze. Nitazungumza. Mheshimiwa speaker, let, let me go back. You, you started in English, so go back. Yeah, let, let, let me proceed. I was just using Kiswahili because we know it also. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the county of Kilifi, there are 1.4 million people with a current allocation of 10 billion against my county of Kiambu with 2.4 million people getting 9 billion. And Mr. Speaker, this is the injustice that we are talking about when it comes to debating about the revenue formula mr speaker there has been an argument there has been an argument mr speaker that the formula so proposed by the committee okay, on okay. which my good brother what's senator your, senator, senator on 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 what's your point of order you know. mr speaker sir i am baffled by your directives in this house you've directed that uh, we comply with the ministry of health guidelines on this COVID pandemic. My, my dear brother, you can be emotive as you want, but we must protect other people who are here. When you speak without uh, a, a, a mask, you're on the dispatch, which is what our dear colleagues from the other chambers will be using, is putting their life at risk. So Mr. Speaker, sir, I would really plead with you that we focus, and then we be, remain relevant on the issues. There is no issue of, there's no point of bringing, uh, being emotive on this matter. Let's follow the Ministry of Health guidelines and let's not also point at our colleagues from Kilifi when he just spoke and then our dear brother goes directly. There's no point of trying to antagonize each other. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Okay, what are, I'm directing that if you'll speak without a mask, I'll order you to sit down. I can see a point of order from Senator Mohamud. Mr. Speaker, sir, is my good friend, Senator Maura, in order to be talking about Kiambu, Cliffy Mandera, while actually he represents special interest, he does not represent Kiambu. Okay, Senator Maura. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is the most frivolous point of uh, statement that has come from my, uh, my former chairman. Because uh, I am in the de Kiambu delegation, I am born and bred in Kiambu. I represent the people of Kiambu here. I vote for them many occasions. And even in Kiambu County, Mr. Speaker, there are so many people with disabilities. And so therefore, I will not allow to be pigeonholed because of this debate. Mr. Speaker, let me proceed. O order, Senators. Order, order, order. Order, 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 Senators. The order, order, Senators. I want to ask you, let us debate soberly, 
those who watch media saw the Senate being discussed last week about being rowdy and saying we are degenerating. Please let's not get there. Let us debate soberly. I know this is a, an emotive matter, but let us maintain our cool. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me proceed. Uh, so, as I was saying, it is actually true. One way you get Marsabit getting another 800 million and Madeira getting about 2.3 billion. Senator Kinyua, what's your point of order? Let's observe social distancing, Senator Malala. Senator Cheriot. Uh, asante sana, Abona Speaker. Uh, Hoja yangu ya nidamu ni kusema ya kwamba nimemsikiza uh, ndugu yangu Stewart Mazayo akisema ya kwamba Senator Wakiambu Mwaura anakosea lakini anaposema idadi ya watu yeye analinganisha anasema idadi analinganisha watu wa Kiambu na watu wa Mandera hakuna makosa yoyote anafanya bwana speaker kwa sababu huduma inapatiwa mwananchi binadamu bwana speaker haipatiwi ukubwa wa so, so msitu haipatiwi ukubwa wa chote bwana speaker ukweli usemo bwana speaker okay. kwa sababu haya maneno Mwaura anasema ukweli na ukweli okay. uambi usemo bwana speaker okay. Okay. kwa sababu Bwana speaker, speaker ni kusema ya kwamba alipokuwa akiongea Mwaura alikuwa akilinganisha na hizi county ziko katika nchi ya Kenya. Speaker Mwaura ni senator wa nchi ya Kenya. Ana uhuru wa kusema ikiwa ni county ya Laikipia, county ya Kiambu na haya maneno yote anasema iko katika idadi vile watu walivyohesabiwa ni katika idadi ya vile watu walivyohesabiwa ikiwa watu ni wachache waambiwe ni wachache bwana speaker na wewe uko bwana speaker hoja yako ya nidhamu ni gani ni hajafanya makosa yoyote kulinganisha Kiambu na Mandera bwana speaker okay. hayo ndio maneno bwana speaker okay, okay sana senator wario what's your point of order asante Mheshimiwa speaker kwa kunipatia fursa hii. Ah uh, mheshimiwa speaker nimesimama hapa kideti kama milingoti. Kuleta hoja ya nidhamu ambayo na hoja yangu ya nidhamu ninaelekeza kwa rafiki yangu seneta uh, Maura. Seneta Maura amelinganisha kaunti ya Garissa, Wajia na kaunti ya Mandera. Na ile kaunti yeye anatoka. Akisema ya kwamba kaunti hizo hazina watu kwa hivyo rasilmali kidogo iende pande hiyo bwana speaker je mimi nauliza nyumba e, maura yuko katika taratibu gani wakati anasema jimbo hizo zote hazina watu na hazisiende pesa na sisi vile tunavyojua jimbo ya kiambu kitoka dunia ya Kenya ianze viongozi wametoka pande hiyo na kiambu inaendelea kujengwa pesa mingi inaenda Kiambu. Na sisi tulileta mambo ya ugatuzi na pesa ya equalization fund ilipelekwa ili kaunti hizi za Mandera, Wajia na Garissa ili iwe, ipate kujengwa. Sasa kuna makosa gani? Watu ya Garissa, watu ya Mandera, watu ya Tanzania na upande hiyo. Kwa hivyo hoja yangu ni nidhamu ni ya kwamba hayuko katika utaratibu yoyote kwa sababu pesa zinaenda kujenga sehemu ambazo hazijawahi kuendelea na tunaelewa ya kwamba Kiambu tayari imeendelea wacha pesa kidogo iende huko na pesa mingi iende pande ya Garissa asante mheshimiwa those I'll be giving I mean who want to stand on point of order be careful not to debate this is a leader of majority Speaker, just, just to help up, up with that matter. Speaker, I think once a point of order goes beyond one minute or two minutes, it's no longer a point of order. The speaker, a point of order should be in a question form. Is so and so in order to do such and such? But if it is not there, Mr. Speaker, there's no need for that person to proceed. Because we are trying to find out what is out of order in the house. So, so I just ask that we really ask people to not to use the pretext of points of order to debate or to argue. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, Senator Mauro, proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, those are points of arguments. They are not points of orders. 
And uh, I'm very glad because my good friend Senator Wario has just confirmed what I have been saying. That the whole idea of the second generation formula was to punish certain counties because of their population, ostensibly because they have produced presidents and they are developed. Senator Wario, I would want to invite you to come with me to Kiambu County. And you see the kind of squalor and poverty where land has been divided to the, to the point that it is not viable anymore. When you see people, like where I come from in Ruido constituency, with a population of 490,120 people, getting the same CDF as you, yet actually our, our, our one constituency has more people than even some counties. So that even when you are getting bursary, you only get 2,000 when your counties are giving over 100,000 or 30,000. This is the inequality that we are talking about. And we cannot engage, Mr. Speaker, in some form of tortuous, convoluted, retributive justice, where you want to cure one form of marginalization by creating another. I don't believe in that Kenya. I believe in a Kenya that is fair, that says, yes, there could be some historical injustices, but they can be cured through the proper operationalization of Article 204 under the Equalization Fund. I believe in a Kenya where there is equality of vote so that one uh, senator does not represent 2.4 million people and another senator is representing 143,000 people. I believe in a country where everybody has got equal opportunity and that those who come to equity must come to equity with clean hands that they may not want to perpetuate the very barriers that kept them at the margins. This formula is not about torturing others because of perceived historical injustice. And let, me, and let, me, let me put it very clearly, Mr. Speaker. If, if the chairman of the cattle dip in your area comes from your village, does that mean all your cows do not have ticks, that they are all healthy? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I want also to give another example. When you share food, do you share food according to the number of people or the size of the dinner plate? I think we share food according to the number of people. We have an ideological underpinning that is fomenting this debate. And this debate is being fomented on the basis of either nationalism or countryism. And we must ask ourselves, what is exactly the design of our devolution? Because, Mr. Speaker, when I look at the bombers draft, it had proposed to have 14 regions and 74 districts. But the current formula divided further to 47 districts. And so therefore, to 47 districts in 1991, which became the counties. And so therefore, Mr. Speaker, it has not been able to resolve the issue of the allure of the presidency. And that is why you heard, brother, the senator, what you are saying, that because you've had the presidency. We in central Kenya would want to tell you here and now that having the presidency is not a panacea to the common problems of Wanjiko, Mwaora, Otieno, and Kaleche. That you still need to have a better Kenya, where equal opportunity is not about a tribe. It's about the population. When you talk about the people of Kiambu, I'm not talking about Kikuyu people. In actual sense, Mr. Speaker, seven out of ten people in Kiambu are Kikuyu, yes, Mbomeru, but three are not. My neighbor who, who died in mysterious circumstances, Cyrus Omondi, was our MCA in Kawendani. Kalpesh is an is a MCA, he's a, he's a nation, he's an MCA in Juja. So when you're talking about this formula, I would want us to disabuse the notion that we are giving money to certain tribes. Because even in Turkana, there are Kikuyus. Even in Mombasa, there are Kikuyus. We are talking about one nation on the basis of fairness and equity. But the journey that we have started, Mr. Speaker, we must always remember that no matter how antagonistic we are, this Senate is required to rise above parochial, provincial tendencies because of the nature of politics being local, to come up with a solution that will go, is going to benefit this country. Mr. Speaker, 
Let us just face the truth. If the National Treasury had increased the allocation to about 350 billion, Mr. Speaker would not be here. Mr. Speaker, we are here because the governors decided to join hands with their counterparts in the executive and they refused to stand with us. And the National Assembly was actually used, and, and, and my good brother, my senior Senator Mahmoud was there, uh, I was his vice chairman, was used to countermand our demand for more resources that were actually scientific, that were actually rational, and I want to say without fear of doubt that this Senate cannot therefore support the formula of Senator Johnson Ada Sakaja, who was voted overwhelmingly by the people of Nairobi, majority of them who come from Mount Kenya region, to actually come up with a, an arbitrary figure of 270 billion to freeze the population of this country and therefore deny roads, water, health, electricity to our people who need it most. Mr. Speaker, as Your I conclude... Your time is up. Your time is up. Senator Kabaka.